Tenant, the number whatever appears on screen right now, film that Christopher Nolan has directed. Christopher Nolan's latest release to cinemas and the only reason that American theaters are currently open because they refused to wait any longer. Screw you, Nolan. My health is at risk because of you. Not actually, I think your movies are amazing. Please keep making stuff. But you as a person have started to piss me off a little bit. Christopher Nolan's insistence that this had to be a release in cinemas. <clears throat> Look, I work at a movie theater. I, because of you, am now at higher risk of getting the damn virus. Though, though I did get another job, so I'm I'm equally at risk there as whatever. Like I said, Tenet is the latest film that Christopher Nolan has directed and released. And I can say if you love Christopher Nolan movies, you are going to enjoy this movie. If you do not like Christopher Nolan movies, you are not going to like this movie. There, if that's all you need, End of the review, you can leave now. Now, for the rest of you that are staying here for my actual thoughts and opinions on this movie, I think it's actually pretty good. I do not think it is Nolan's best work, but that is because I am very biased and believe it to be the prestige, and it will always be the prestige, and nothing will ever make it not the prestige. Can you tell I like the prestige yet? This is a pretty good movie, though it is probably about average for what Christopher Nolan puts out. That is very good, but not as good as some of his other films. Though, if you, again, if you like his stuff, you are going to enjoy this movie. Now, Tenant, at its core, is a spy thriller, going through and trying to get the information on how to prevent the world from ending. And if you've seen the trailers, you know that is not a spoiler because that is 100% just stated in the film. But in this, the, they're trying to end it by preventing the world from entering, how is it described in the film? Reversing an object's entropy? Basically, inverse the flow of time on an object. That's basically how it's described. Though, I was given the impression that it was going to be, that that was going to be used a lot more than it actually is in the film. It's a little confusing and a little bit spoilery to get into the true scientific nature of it, but basically an inversed object as it's known, aka something that you can do, something like pull the gun and catch it. Those items specifically occur when an object is like sent backwards through time. The problem is that the way that this trailer, per the way that every trailer has presented itself makes it feel like people have this innate ability to reverse an object on their own. It doesn't need to be a special object, but it does in the actual movie. So that was a little off-putting to me initially because I was like, so they can't just do it to anything? That's... But you made it sound like it could. So why can't it just do it to everything? Because Nolan wrote it like that. <sighs> That's not an excuse, or at least that's how I felt. But yeah, again, this movie at its core is a spy thriller, and I thought that worked really well, especially with the acting of all the characters. The main character of this movie, whose name I cannot remember, nor can I remember the actor's name, because I am terrible about that kind of thing, he works for the CIA initially at the very beginning of the film, until he doesn't anymore because reasons that I'm not going to get into because massive spoilery territory. Suffice it to say, another group kind of picks him up. Though again, if you've seen the trailers, that's kind of obvious. But anyway, I thought he did a fantastic job. He played the role of the calm, collected spy dude really, really well. And on another note, Chris, uh, Chris Patterson? Cedric Diggory from the fourth Harry Potter movie, or as most people know him, Edward from Twilight, he also did a phenomenal job, especially uh, with the role his character overall plays in the story. He is a hell of a lot of fun to watch, and his character is pretty entertaining. Though, not as eccentric, again, as I was led to believe with the trailers. So, there is that. Now, none of the performances are truly phenomenal to me. Not saying they're bad, but none of them really stand out as these master level. None of the performances in this film are truly stand out to me. None of them, like stand high above the rest of the performances as especially extremely good. They were all phenomenal actors, but they all just felt like good actors. There was no standout performance in this, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. In fact, I would argue that it's a good thing because everyone did a really, really good job. And I have to say, I would love to see the like main actor in this movie, the, the main character dude. I would love to see him in more stuff. He did a phenomenal job. 
I want to see his career continue and grow. I don't know if he's been in a ton of other stuff. Again, I don't keep up with a ton of actors. I don't keep up with a ton of Hollywood news. But the guy in the lead, I thought he did a good job. I would love to see his career continue to grow and just him continue to make phenomenal movies. While there's no standout actor in this movie, neither is the plot truly extraordinary. Like I said, at its center, Tenant is a spy thriller film with the added element of inversing an object's time so it, you know, goes backwards. Issue here stems not from the fact that it is bad, if that makes sense. The issue here is that I would have liked to see it play a little bit more of an important role to the plot, the inversion of objects, because we only see this effect done a few times. And I would have loved to see it done more and see it affect things, because in a preview that I saw for this movie, it ragged on how the stunt teams had to work a lot to do these backwards, to like, do things in reverse and reverse the fight scenes and do all of that, which, yeah, it's impressive, but a lot of this movie really is more of them sitting around and talking and discussing and planning. A lot of this action isn't there. I'll, honestly, a good chunk of the trailer, which was mostly action scenes, that's pretty much every action scene in the film. Yeah, they're a bit longer, but most of this movie is talking and discussing. Much like Inception, which is another issue that I personally had with that film, a lot of this movie isn't actually spent on what its selling point is. A lot of it is discussing and talking about what will occur and how they are going to do the thing that needs to be done. But yeah, that, that was one major issue I had with it, is that the, the selling point of the film wasn't primarily focused on, and I really, really wish that it had been, because that's what I came to watch, that's what I wanted to see. But I can understand it's hard to do something like that overall, but... I don't know. For me, I personally would have loved to see it. I would have loved to see the, that idea actually delved into a lot more than what it is ultimately in the movie. Another gripe that I have with this movie is how much they tried to sell the fact that it is done entirely practically. Yes, on the whole, practical effects do look marginally better than VFX shots. Practical effects are not the end all be all. In fact, Nolan uses a lot of G CGI in most of his movies because movies today are almost impossible to make without CGI. Even if it is simple wire removals or just the painting out of rigs, there is CGI in almost every single Christopher Nolan movie. Inception is probably the most blatant one, because, you know, it's impossible to do that kind of thing without CGI. There are shots in there literally impossible to get without CGI. There are shots in this movie that are also similarly impossible, even if they are just quick comp shots of the care of carriage going forward in time while everyone else is going backwards in time. And I say this because there are shots like that in this movie where not only are people running forward and running backwards, the running backwards is easy enough to just practice and choreograph correctly. But you see explosions and stuff reversing itself, which is impossible to do without the aid of computer generated imagery. So, Nolan, stop hating on CG. Stop claiming that everything you do is practical. It is not. It never will be, and you know it. You just know where to apply it correctly to enhance your movies. That is my rant about Christopher Nolan's CG shit. Ha! Sorry, I love practical effects. I'm I'm a big proponent of using them in movies as much as possible, but CGI is not the worst thing out there. In fact, when CGI is incredibly good, you do not notice that shit unless they want you to notice it. Seriously, people only complain about bad CG as often as they do and say everything is bad because you notice that shit because it looks out of place. No one complains about the Planet of the Apes movies because it's all really good CG. No one complains about Blade Runner 2049 because it's all damned good CGI. Fuck, as much as I rag on the Transformers movies, that's really, really good CGI because the Transformers look like they exist in the same plane as the humans. 
Okay, my rant about CGI is over. Back to the review. But yeah, overall, I thought Tenant was a lot of fun. Again, if you enjoy Christian Nolan films, you are going to enjoy his latest spy thriller epic. All of the actors do a phenomenal job with their roles. <laughs> One role I have to give credit to, Kenneth Branagh, aka Gilderoy Lockhart, Hercule Poirot, the director of Thor, and that racist ass hat villain from Wild Wild West. He does a phenomenal job as the villain of this movie, and I would say he, he does a really good job making you hate him. So, there's that. But, again, all the actors do a phenomenal job, and this movie is highly entertaining because all their performances are really, really good and solid. And with that, I would say, for me, Tenant rolls as 17. Overall, a very, very good movie, but not Christopher Nolan's best. And if you do enjoy Christopher Nolan's stuff overall, I would say go watch it and just enjoy the ride for what it is. What's up, guys? I hope that you enjoyed that video from me. I enjoyed this movie, if you can't tell, but Nolan himself is a little grating on my nerves personally, but that is all beside the point of this video. If you would like to follow me on social media, links to my Twitter and Instagram will be in the description down below, as always. And with that, I hope that you guys have a fantastic day, and as always, peace suit, guys. Bye.